Before we write any other code, we need to make sure that we have set up the interrupt correctly. So to do that, we're going to open a serial communication port by writing serial.begin and we'll use 9600 as the speed and inside the interrupt we will write serial dot print line interrupt so whenever we see interrupt written on the screen that means that the pin has closed an interrupt successfully what we can now do is upload this code to the Arduino if after verifying since we have found no errors in the code we will now upload the code to the Arduino and we will also open the serial monitor here you can see nothing is happening because there are no interrupts connected so if I connect a receiver to pin 53 of the board we shall see an interrupt now if I change from pin 30, 53 to 52 we are also getting interrupts being printed to the screen so for the 51 and the pin 50 this means our interrupt has successfully worked and we can now connect four different channels to these four pins on the mega board and we can start to program to calculate the channel values since we are measuring the receiver signal it is good to recap what signal we are actually getting all receivers transmit using a PWM signal the signal on this graph where we have time on the x-axis and voltage on the y-axis looks like this it is a rectangular signal that rises in voltage at certain time t1 and it stays at the high voltage for some duration of time which we will call delta t and after that delta t time it falls back down to zero volts at t2 and then after a while it repeats itself again when we are measuring the pwm signal we are interested in the value which is labeled here as delta t this value would represent the position of the sticks on the controller since we have an interrupt set up the interrupt mask register is checking the pins for any change in the value so as soon as the time reaches t1 the value changes from 0 volts to about 5 volts this will cause an interrupt the same will happen at t2 when value falls from 5 volts down to 0 volts we will have another interrupt and we will use that to calculate the value delta t now to begin writing the code first thing i need to do is declare a few variables i will do that right at the top what i have done is declared four different variables for timer last channel and input now as we have the variables ready we can now go into the interrupt vector and start writing the code I no longer need this serial dot print line so I can get rid of that the very first thing I am going to do is I'm going to write timer 0 is equal to microsecond this first line what this will do is that as soon as an interrupt occurs a timestamp will be made and it will be saved onto a timer 0 and now I need to check which pin changed in state for this I will need an if condition so I will write if open bracket last channel 0 is equal to 0 and sorry and pin B and B followed by seven zeros and last one. Now what this condition will do, it will make sure the last channel value was low and the new channel value is a high. So this will check if the 
pin state has changed from low to high. If you want more information on this PINB and B701 notation, please read the microcontroller datasheet in chapter 13 in Digital I.O. This thing is exactly the same as writing digital read. However, this is a lot quicker and uses a lot less processing time. Inside this is condition, I am going to set last channel is equal to 1 since we know the channel has now risen to a high state and I'm going to set timer 1 is equal to timer 0. After this I will create another condition. This time I will need last channel Again, this is going to be channel 0 is equal to 1 and copy the same thing from above, paste it below. However, this time I'm just going to notify it as not high. What this line here will do, it will make sure that the last channel position was high and the new channel position is low then this code here will be launched so I can now set last channel is equal to 0 and I can set input 0 as timer 0 minus timer 1 this will calculate the difference between the two times and set that as input 0. In order to save time, I have added the code for channel 2, channel 3, and channel 4. I have also added a section which will allow me to see the inputs printed on a serial window. For convenience, I will add the code to the video description. Now I need to upload the code and open the serial monitor. Now after turning on the controller, as you can see we now have some data. If I move the channel 1, you can see that I have 1000 microseconds as the inputs. And if I maximize the channel 1, I have 2000 as the maximum input. When I change the channel 2, I get 1000 as minimum and 2000 as maximum. Same can be said for channel 3, 2000 maximum, 1000 minimum, and channel 4, 1000 minimum, 2000 maximum. Now the code that I have written is only for 4 channels, however you can easily add more channels if you have more pins available on the board. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much and enjoy.